Good evening, Momentum Christian Church. Hey, this is our Good Friday service. I know it's different. It's virtual. It's going to be a little different for us tonight. But the good thing is, is this, that we serve a God that does not change. And Jesus Christ, what he did for us over 2,000 years ago, is what set us free. And it's allowed us to have an eternal life with God the Father. And so we need to celebrate it. And that's what's good about Good Friday is that we were given life, and life more abundant, Jesus even said. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like you to turn to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, and tonight we're going to focus on the crucifixion. Again, we know that Jesus suffered brutally before he even was put on the cross. Uh, and, but tonight I really felt that we need to look and read the account in Luke chapter 23 of the crucifixion. And so if you turn to your Bibles in Luke 23, we're going to believe, begin in, in verse 26. And it reads this way, And as they led him away, they seized one, Simon the Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it before behind Jesus. And again, it was that top cross member that uh, Simon had to carry. And it says this, And there followed him a great multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But returning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and the hills cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it's dry? And two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that was called the skull, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood watching by the rulers, scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is Christ of God, his chosen one. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are king of the Jews, save yourselves. And there was also an inscription over him, and it said, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged on a rail at him, saying, Are you not Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for the spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breast. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. And again... I just want to talk a little bit about the crucifixion, about the perfect obedience of Jesus Christ, our Savior. I think about this thief who asked Jesus to save him, to remember him. 
And Jesus' reply to him was, This day you'll be with me in paradise. And see, Jesus' death for us that are born again, who have been made new through His blood and through His obedience, even unto death, we will and we have the promise that one day we will be with Him in paradise. But I encourage you again, I've said this many times, if you're saved just because of you wanting heaven, or heaven is your prize, there's a, there's a problem with that. It's going to be great, but Jesus is the price. He's the prize. He's our reward. And I think about when Jesus was in the garden. He asked the Father, is there any other way? Is there a way that this cup can be passed? Is there a way that I, I don't have to do what I know I'm going to have to do or what's required of me? And I think about Jesus. His fear wasn't about the, the mocking, the humiliation. It wasn't about the beatings that he was going to take, about his beard being pulled, about a crown of thorns being beaten into his skull. It wasn't about his wrist and his feet being impaled. He wasn't afraid of none of that. But what he was afraid of was, again, taking our sin upon himself and receiving the wrath of God. He was worried about separation from God the Father. He had never encountered that before. And because of his obedience, listen, when you're born again, you will never have to encounter that because Jesus paid the price. I want to read something to you tonight that I hope really drives this home. Again, we celebrate Good Friday because we know the story. But again, I want you to put yourself in His disciples' place that night. Those followers, the multitude, that soldier that pierced His side and finally declared that He was innocent and that He was the Son of God. Listen as I read this tonight. It says this, At the age of 33, Jesus was condemned to death. At the time, crucifixion was the worst death. Only the worst criminals were condemned to be crucified. Yet, it was even more dreadful for Jesus, unlike other criminals condemned to death by crucifixion. You see, Jesus was nailed to the cross by his hands and feet. And these nails, I want you to know, they were anywhere from six inches to eight inches long. And they were driven, often it's depicted that they were driven into his palms, but these were really driven into his wrist. And there's a tendon that runs through your wrist all the way up to your shoulder. And the Romans knew this. Again, they had perfected this art of crucifixion, this worst death. They knew exactly where the nails would have to go, those Roman guards that took that hammer and drove them. They knew where that tendon was. And they knew what that tendon would do, that it would tear and it would break, forcing Jesus to use his back and the muscles in his back to support him so he could breathe. Both of his feet were nailed together. Thus he was forced to support himself on one single nail that impaled his feet to the cross. Jesus could not support himself with his legs because of the pain. So he was forced to alternate between arching his back muscles and then using his legs so he could just continue to breathe. Imagine the struggle. Imagine the pain. Imagine the suffering. But remember the courage. Jesus endured this in reality for over three hours. Yes, three hours. Can you imagine this type of suffering? 
A few minutes before he died, Jesus stopped bleeding. He was simply pouring water from his wounds. And from common images that we see, we often see wounds to his hands and to his feet. And even the spear, spear wound in his side. But do we really realize the wounds that he suffered? The wounds that were actually made on his body. Again, remember the hammer driving large nails through his wrist and his feet that were overlapped. And even a large nail hammered through the arches. Then the Roman guard piercing his side with a spear. But before the nails and the spear, Jesus was whipped and he was beaten. To a point that he was not recognizable. The whipping was so severe that it tore flesh from his body. The beating was so horrific that his face was torn and his beard ripped from his face. The crown of thorns cut deeply into his scalp. They actually beat it into his scalp. Most men would not have survived this type of torture. He had no more blood to bleed out. Only water poured from his wounds. The human adult body contains 3.5 liters just little less than a gallon of blood and Jesus poured out all 3.5 liters. He had three nails hammered into his members, a crown of thorn beaten into his head, and beyond that a Roman soldier who stabbed a spear into his chest. All these without mentioning the humiliation he suffered after carrying his own cross for almost two kilometers, why the crowd spat in his face and threw stones. That cross member was heavy. Jesus had to endure this ex experience to open up the gates of heaven for us so that we can have free access to God, so that our sins could be washed away as white as snow. We cannot ignore this. Jesus Christ died for me. He died for you. He died for you. This is why we celebrate, because we know the story. And listen, we have the hope of everlasting life. We have the ability to share this hope with others. Listen, I, the, the longer I live, and, and as this world gets more and more crazy, I realize something that there's people that have never heard this account. They've never heard about Jesus Christ dying on a cross for them. They've never heard the last things that Jesus said. It is finished, paid in full. There's a lot of people out there with debt that still has not been paid. There's a lot of people, loved ones of ours, your neighbors, who are under the wrath of God, and they don't have to be. And I'd encourage you, listen, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to share the account of Good Friday, and tell them why it's so good. And this Sunday, we're going to celebrate the resurrection. You see, on the cross that day, Jesus defeated sin. He took all the sin of the world, your sin and my sin, upon his shoulders. He took the wrath of God for us. He saved us. He paid the price in full. He has set us free. And we know that Sunday we celebrate the resurrection where He defeats death. To where we don't have to worry about death and, and dying. Are we going to face pain here on this earth more? I can tell you this, that that's a certain thing because the Bible tells us that we're going to. 
But the thing is, is this, if you're born again, and if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, your last breath here on earth is your first breath with Him. So listen, celebrate today the goodness of God. And there'd be a, a few things that I'd recommend for you to do. One thing that our family does, or I know I do often on Good Friday, is I watch the Passion of the Christ. Just to bring back to memory and the reality of what Jesus had to suffer that day. But listen, I'd encourage you, take this message and share it with others. There's many, again, that have never heard the story. As time goes on, there's going to be many more that don't hear the story. And you are God's plan A. So listen, I hope that you're blessed this Good Friday. I look forward to our Easter Sunday service. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and celebrating that. And I would encourage you to do something special. Dress up. Dress up and take a picture of your family dressed up for Easter. And I'll tell you what, if you send it to me through a text, I would love to post those pictures up on the Momentum Facebook page. I think it would be a good thing to see all our faces. But it would also, again, just uh, again allow others to see why we're celebrating. And, and again, smile about the resurrection. Smile about uh, uh, death being defeated, about sin being conquered. So it's a time to celebrate. So listen, right after the message now, we're going to get into communion. Again, remember that uh, if you don't have juice, water works. Uh, if you have a Cheez-It, That'll work also for the bread. Just remember, those things are just symbolic. But today, we're going to take communion together to remember what Jesus Christ did for us. God bless you. We will see you Sunday morning. Okay, Momentum. Now we're going to uh, share the Lord's table with one another. And so make sure that you have those emblems ready. And I'm going to actually look at a, a different account today. Uh, since it's Good Friday, uh, I, I believe that it would probably be great to look at Matthew uh, chapter 26. If you want to turn to Matthew 26, and we're going to be looking at verse 26. That's Matthew 26, verse 26. This is this. Now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples, and he said, Take and eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I love that portion of scripture that we see in the upper room. This is probably one of the most intimate times that Jesus actually has with his disciples. The Last Supper. The night before his crucifixion. And again, we know at this supper that there's several things that take place. He, he actually shares a, a last... <laughs> Uh, test with his disciples that it seems like all of them fail by washing feet. Uh, we see that this is where Judas is uh, definitely revealed. And I just think about what it might have been like in that room that night. Did they fully understand what the Lord was saying? But we know this, that we take the Lord's Supper to remember what Jesus did in remembrance of him. And again, we know the Apostle Paul has given us in clear instructions on how we should partake of communion today. And I want to look at that portion of Scripture also. So if you turn to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I want to look at uh, verse 27. It says this, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. 
Let a person examine himself, then so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why so many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are dis disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. And these instructions, I really believe tonight we need to take a couple things to heart. The first thing is, is this, remember what Jesus Christ did. And especially tonight, let's focus on the crucifixion. Let's focus about that price that was paid so, so dearly by his body and his blood. You know, there was something that I seen today on Facebook that really caught my attention. And this is this, Jesus got what he didn't deserve so you could get what you didn't deserve. And again, we know this, there's a statement that says that we didn't deserve it and we didn't earn it. But Jesus Christ, he did. And he did it for us. And so I want us to remember tonight, tonight what Jesus did on the cross for us, even as we reflected through the message of the pain and the suffering and the obedience and the courage of our Lord. But I also believe that with, pa with the Apostle Paul's instruction here that we need to examine ourselves tonight. And maybe you, you found yourself, again, we haven't been around many church people lately, so again, I, I would think that we wouldn't have any sin that way. I think, in fact, when we come together, we're going to be more loving than we ever have been. But we have been quarantined in homes. And again, I think about what Jesus said, to love your God with everything, to love your neighbor as yourself. And our neighbor, as I've taught in the Bible, is everyone. Our brothers is our our people and our, our faith family and in the body of Christ but neighbors it includes everyone so maybe during this quarantine time maybe you are at aught with a family member maybe you are upset with your neighbor maybe you're still working like I am and it's a co-worker or maybe there's just simply a sin between you and God and I've been saying all along it's a good time during this time of things slowing down to go deeper in our relationship with God. And I can tell you this, if you don't forgive others, the Bible is so clear that God can't forgive you. And again, that is a, it's not a matter of your salvation, but what it is a matter of is, is your relationship with Him. It's hindered. The Bible tells me that if I speak to my wife wrong, that He doesn't hear my prayers. So don't allow your relationship, especially during this time where you can be going so deep and your relationship with the Lord should be so sweet in this time of uncertainty and unrest. And, and listen, maybe you haven't had peace. Maybe you've been worrying. And listen, worry is a type of sin. And I'd encourage you tonight to repent, to turn to Jesus. Look full into His face and understand that He is your peace, that He is your hope. So we're going to take a minute right now and just search our hearts and ask God and the Holy Spirit to reveal anything that's not of Him. So let's just take that time right now. Father, I just come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who paid in full our debt. And Father, today I just ask, Lord, you just cause us, Lord, to examine our hearts. 
ask ourselves, where are we with you? Have we gone deeper in our relationship with you? Have we maybe been in some way pulled away from you because of fear and worry and, and sin in our lives? And God, I just ask, Lord, if, if we have anything between us and another brother or a neighbor, God, I just ask, Lord, you just expose it right now. Cause us, Lord, to repent, to turn from it and turn to you. Lord, your word makes it very clear that we're to be peaceable to all men as it depends on us. So, Father, I, you also make it clear that blessed are the peacemakers. So, Father, cause us, Lord, to get that right between us and the brother and the neighbor. And, God, we know this, that if we don't forgive others, you will not forgive us. And that's a scary thing. So, Father, cause us, Lord, to be those that are quick to forgive. And Father, tonight, Lord, if it's an outstanding sin in our lives, Lord, cause us to repent and turn to you. Even if we've done it before, God, we know this, that you are the one that can break every chain, and we believe that tonight. And Father, we thank you, most of all, of the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, him going to the cross in total obedience. Again, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that that he paid the price that we might have life and we might enjoy you forever. So, Father, I just ask, Lord, cause us, Lord, to hold on to that. Cause us, Lord, to rejoice in that. And we just thank you so much in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you've got your emblems, let's get them ready. And this is this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23, For what I received from the Lord, what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread together. And in the same way, he also took the cup, and after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink together. He says, For as often as you can, as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And I'd encourage you, to do exactly that, to proclaim the name of the Lord. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We will see you Sunday morning.